doesn't always work though. I, I just uh, the other day, an actor, I mentioned what the director told us. And when I said, oh, the, other, uh, the director wanted us to do the, the actor said, oh, well, I'll just wait for them to tell me, you yeah. know? So there's still that happening. And some people don't uh, want to be told anything. And so, you know, you got to juggle that and try to keep the energy good because I love being at work. Mm -hmm. Thank you for always bringing good energy, bro. Cause we got a lot of good people, man. We do. Thank you. General. We do. There's, we do. We got some talented. We have good souls. And I think when you work with people all day under uh, stressful conditions, it helps to have good spirits. It helps to have teamwork. You'll probably always hear me talk about good energy, positivity, and teamwork. Those are those are things you must have at work doing what we do. I, I think for me, it was uh, a time to find a safe place for my grief. And it had to be in my work. It had to be in my conduct. And I, I want to honor my mother and who I am and how I am. You know, Riel, I went back to school. I'm getting my Bachelor of Science degree. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm at the Los Angeles Film School. And I'm in my last year getting my Bachelor of Science. I got a 4.0. And um, wow, the main impetus was for my mom. My you know, mom had two master's degree and a PhD. And so mom was an academic. And, and for me, you know, just being an actor wasn't enough, you know? And so um, I definitely wanted to honor her with, with a post-secondary education completion. And um, it's just important to me, man, to, to, to be, to represent myself accurately and my mother. The, and you're doing, I know she's really, really proud of you. Thanks. What, uh, real quick, couple, and then I'll, I'll do what I call rapid fire, get you out of here. Cause I, I always, I have to ask these questions mm -hmm. because they're going to want to know. So your first day, do you remember your first day on, on general hospital? What was that like? Terrifying. <laughs> Terrif for me, it was scary because there was no plan for Curtis. You know, I did audition for uh, what became the Dr. Maddox character. And I didn't get it, but then I found out, oh, ABC loves you, they're gonna create a character. So they created him. And when I got, uh, remember that was when they used to, uh, to uh, deliver your uh, scripts to you. Mm -hmm. And so I get this script delivered to my back door and I pick it up and there was a scene with uh, Curtis and Hayden. Now they didn't tell me what my name was gonna be. So I didn't know if Hayden was a dude. I didn't know if I was Curtis or Hayden. So I didn't know what lines to, 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 to learn. So I learned everybody's lines. Then I get to work and I find out my name is Curtis and um, they had me smoking a cigar and I thought, what? And I was supposed to be scruffy and unsavory, like, like, you know, sketchy. And I showed up doing me, you know, I just <laughs> beard, you know, and I remember Eric, the lovely Erica Buddick, who was playing Hayden. She says uh, she had some line like, uh, look at you, you're scruffy, you're disheveled, you know. And then she stopped in the mid take. She goes, I'm not saying this line. Look at this guy. He looks like a model. And the producers came down. We rewrote pages on the on the fly because they didn't even know what I was supposed to be on the show. Mm -hmm. We crafted Curtis on the fly. Wow. Even today, we have new writers. A lot of the new writers don't know what the old writers were, had for me. Like, I was former DEA like you, like Jordan, like Taggart, mm -hmm. like Jordan. And, um, and the newer writers don't remember that. So if you look at earlier interviews, I'm telling people, yeah, I'm former DEA, former Baltimore PD. And now they don't have that as part of his background, but that's okay because I kind of like where we're going now. I love our writers. I just, I have the most respect because I brought up some concerns to them one year ago this week about how the black characters were portrayed. And I thought, you know, with 40 actors on the, on the show, Six of them are black, maybe maybe eight, but you hardly see some of the other ones. On contract, there's five, and I've been the only black male for 45 years. There's something wrong with that. We're in New York. This is America. It's 20, 2020. Well, last year was 2021. I said, we have the responsibility and the privilege to reflect society as a whole, but we also have a responsibility and a privilege to reflect an aspirational society. There, you know, This is make-believe. And so there's no reason why the black characters have to be second class citizens. And that's what it feels like. We had the police commissioner who's in a loft while her subordinates have houses. And it was, there were things that didn't add up. And, you know, those writers apologized. They applauded the courage it took 
for me to meet with them and talk. I had seven pages of notes and um, they made changes. And I mean, the pen has moved. I see uh, a fruit of that conversation. I, they were contrite and I feel it. And um, I told them that I'll honor them by doing my best work. You know, I want to honor those words because look what they're doing for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm just incredibly. The writing is phenomenal right the, now. The show is really good. I watch the whole show now. Instead of fast forwarding, mm -hmm. I pretty much watch, you know, if there's 10 storylines, I'm watching eight of them. And so the show is fire right now. And so it's fine to identify the problem, which has been identified. I think we know a, a lot of the problem. Um, and then to be able to articulate what it is, how you feel, but also, like I said earlier, have a solution, be solution oriented. Mm -hmm. Again, it's one thing to protest in March, but then it's, it's, like, it's like knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, fine. But when the door opens, then what? We can't sit up there when the door's open and continue knocking or marching, the door's open. Now we have to have some discourse that makes sense, that has uh, uh, some forward mobility to it, right? Actionable steps. So I'm, I'm, I'm that person. Um, we know the trauma. Um, we've seen the symptoms. Now let's get to the diagnosis. Let's get to the cure.